Hi guys, welcome back to another Crewworks video. In this video what we're going to do is build the signal box. Uh, now, do your research. Um, this is for anything that you want to make on your layout, but the way I do it is do your research, get loads of photos, uh, and if you can, visit the real place that this, these things are at. Um, and then you can get a real feel for how big and you know how things really are in the real world. If you want to copy the real world, this is. I haven't got that opportunity because this signal box is no more. Well, it doesn't. It's not here anymore. This this part of Crewworks doesn't exist, which is a shame because it was there for ages. Um, but what I've got are a load of photos. I'll show you those now, actually. Uh, and in the photos, you can see just how the signal box was and looked and look at its colors and you know maybe look at look at certain features of what you're trying to model and as long as you kind of replicate those on your model then most of the time the model is quite pleasing to the eye uh, now if you come back um, now the space I'm playing with here is is this like it's it, the signal box has to sit in this area uh, I also need my points to function, but what I'm also bearing in mind here is is if I've got a class 40 on a curve, well, on this curve here, because it's curving like this, the body of the loco is actually going to sit more closer to the signal box, so I have to bear that in mind. I've already taken these measurements, by the way, so uh, and, and translated them to the PC. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the PC next. Uh, armed with our photos as a 3D model of the signal box. Now I'm not going to show you all the 3D modeling to perfection here because I didn't film that much of it and also it's a very um, personal thing like many different people have different ways of 3D modeling something but uh, a basic starting point or a datum measurement I like to do is measure an engaged figure, look at the photo you've got and then sort of like work out how big the door is on that said building versus that engaged person and then with that door size then what you can do is work out how wide the wall is on your signal box and how high it is and how long it is and that's what I've done but I've also constrained it a little bit in the 3D model to fit in this area so the height was important because the roof can't hit the low codes. but anyway I'll stop blabbing on let's have a look at what a 3D modelled and we'll go from there shall we Okay guys, so you probably just saw it there, but um, yeah, so we 3D printed our 3D model. Um, I, there's, <laughs> I'm not trying to hide anything, this took three attempts to, to print this. Um, and it's still not perfect, but I think it's more than good enough. But, and I say not perfect, because that door at the bottom there is bowed in. But it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm okay with that. Imperfections. It's better than I could probably make scratch building it, but it's going to sit in our allocated space. Now, this is important because you don't always get measurements correct. Sometimes you do things wrong in knife, so just keep checking things as you go in. But I wanted to check it will fit in this area. It will. Uh, the other thing I haven't shown you, so I'm just going to show you now, so it's not a surprise in the future, is I've also printed some steps. Um, again, this was probably number eight 
to get a successful print just because it's so tiny. I think these rails are 0.4, 0 0.5 of a mil th like thick, so they're very small. Um, and it will just, you know, sit on the end of the signal box when when it's level. Obviously, it's it's falling down the hill at the minute. But check fitment, we're good. So the next thing to do um, is to, in my case, prime this thing with paint. Um, I'm going to use some Halfords white primer, um, like you use on cars, real cars. I'm going to put it through my airbrush. Um, so I'll basically spray the white primer into a cup. Then I'll pour it into my airbrush, and then it's half going off already, so then I'll, I'll, I'll spray it through my airbrush onto this. That will allow me then to paint this um, with uh, red or you know other colours, because white will be a good basis, and the top half of this needs to go white anyway. So let's go paint that white, paint probably that white primer, and then... Um, I'm probably just going to leave this till the end when I've got something else to paint in a later date because this can be added later. Um, if I put it on now, um, it'll just get in my way and it'll probably break. So I'm going to put this somewhere safe and this will be one of, the, one of the last details to sort of go on the layout really. So I've got a little tray of little bits. Uh, and I'll give you a little spoiler alert here. Um, I've also printed these, <laughs> which are light posts. So. There's, there's a lot of things going on, but I like to give you these little sneaky things just to let you know there's something going on. Um, but that, that I'm happy with. So next thing, let's go paint this. And um, for any of those who are like, oh gosh, you know, what? I've never seen this before. Uh, this resin's pretty good. Um, it's uh, structurally not that unstrong, so it's pretty, it's pretty strong. I mean, you'll see all the um, the window frames there. And it's, you know, it's, it's, I would say it's as strong as almost injection molded plastic, except maybe a little brittler. So if I was to drop this on the layout like this from, I don't know, a meter or something, it would, it would probably break those pieces. But for the detail that you can get in there, um, it's absolutely superb. I'll stop blabbing on here. I just I, I love that I've managed to do this. It's fantastic, and all the bricks are c coming out. It's oh, it's amazing. Let's go prime this. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like white. Okay, so we're back, um, and these are the parts painted white, um, and you can see the detail comes out a lot better. Um, it's not 100% perfect. I, mean, I don't like rounded edges, but you're seeing this on a camera, and actually in real person, you can hardly notice any of that. Now the chairs I would say in there, now that it's white, are a little bit on the small side to be honest. I'm just trying to pop a little engage figure in there for your reference. Okay so he's an engaged sized person so they're like little children's seats. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, and if anything I think that the, the signal box is probably on a slightly smaller size uh, but generally speaking I'm quite happy with this um, the door yeah it's about it's about right isn't it right uh, the next thing though for this is actually to spray paint these bricks I think um, so I'm gonna mask around the top uh, where this beam is basically all the way around and then I'm just gonna spray paint so that'll be covered spray paint under that all of this red. So I'll go do that and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back and I have just airbrushed the bricks onto the signal box. Just give you the grand unveiling. Now the worry here, I'm just using by the way 3M blue painters tape. The issue here is you'll get bleed underneath the tape so I'm very careful to try and give it a nice crisp line. see like that and hopefully I am being a bit careful because I don't want to rip the white paint off it should be pretty stuck but if I just tear this masking tape off it could take the paint off and I don't want that so gently does it oh yeah she's looking pretty good now obviously I've got to do a lot of what I do is I tend to do the details and then the weathering's the last thing you ever do. 
I guess it's true to the real world where you um, you know you have something nice and new and then it gets dirty over time it gets weathered very happy with that that's come out really good I do me uh, so obviously that's that uh, but we also have a roof now I painted the roof it's dark grey colour and here we go nothing too extravagant all I use are kebab, stick, uh, kebab skewers with a bit of white tack and then it just gets stuck to the piece so I can just go like that you can see the original greens there and then the roof will live on top now um, again there's no locating pins or anything when it comes to it I might even just white tack this onto the roof so let's do some detail work okay guys so what we've got here, um, obviously we we did the white, we've done the red oxide colour. What I, for, I can't show you it because I, I didn't film it I'm afraid. Um, like the walls we did on crew works, I've, I've got a bit of black acrylic paint and I mixed it with water. So it's a really watery mix and just slosh it all over the brickwork. Be careful not to get it on the white, otherwise it will sort of stain that. Um, and you let it dry out. And then when it dries out, it basically dries in the gaps of the bricks. That, that's it in short. And it gives it a very patchy um, and then quite authentic brick looking colour there. And also it just, it just goes in all them gaps. It looks great, doesn't it? I, I love it. It's not perfect, but I mean, it's for the most part, I, yeah, I love it. Anyway, what I want to show you in this bit are all these black lines that I've done. Um, because I didn't brush it on there. Um, I used a marker pen. Now this is a good way of doing many things on it with Engage. Now let's take for example the brickwork around these, I'm going to call them vent bricks, they're like art deco bricks, but um, because it's a raised area you see it's very easy to get a permanent marker pen and just draw around on that high edge versus brushing paint on there because paint can kind of flow around the edges. The marker pen is simply a case of, let's just do that, done, kind of, I missed a bit. And that, you know, that's it, that's all I've done around the edge. Uh, looking at the photos, this piece here actually isn't black so I'm leaving that. Um, so as you see it now, is especially from this side, so this would be the, if you were looking down here you'd see that massive industrial unit in the background, and then the uh, Eagle Bridge in the background going over the rails. So for the most part that is good, I'm happy with this. Um, I think this is like a little notice board that they had with like um, probably health and safety legislation paperwork somewhere, maybe, maybe not. Um, what I'll do is I'll look at the photos and I'll just keep going with the detailing aspect of this. Um, we need to, I think, maybe maybe paint the toilet in there. <laughs> so let's crack on with this. Uh, I'm just going to do the obvious. I'll mix up some different coloured paints and start painting the benches and these uh, the switch gear here. It's not obviously really scale, but looking in through the window, I think it looks convincing enough. So yeah, let's crack on, shall we?
Guys, um, this is what I'm going to stick with for the time being. All the other touches and whatnot can be done at a later date. But I'm happy to call that sort of done. Um, you can see a bit of light there just under the roof, but the angle you're going to see it at, I don't think it's going to matter too much. And if it is a problem, I'll add more white tack. But I think for the time being, we'd call it quits there. That's all the detail I wanted to add inside of the uh, signal box itself. I'm going to call this as a success. Um, and yeah, things like the stairs and the lighting uh, we'll come back to in uh, another episode. Um, so for the time being that is just an LED and I've yet to put resistors onto the wires there. So it's only a 3 volt LED. Um, but hopefully we'll see some lights coming out of this at some point in the future. So for the time being that's it for this video and I'll hope to see you in the next one. Cheers!